thank you, Lord God, for allowing us the privilege to live to see another day. A day that we've never seen before, and certainly a day we'll never see again. We ask you, Father God, that you'll move by your spirit and bless your people. Save the unsaved. Heal those that are sick. Comfort the bereaved, oh God. And we ask, Lord God, that you'll prove yourself to the world that you are God. That your name might be explained and exalted throughout the earth, oh God. That you are King of kings and Lord of lords and that you are God all by yourself. So, Lord, we commit these services into your hands that your name will be glorified and your people edified, oh God. And bless Pastor Mike as he waits for the word of God today, Lord God. Anoint him and take him deep into the storehouse of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we might be fed of thee, that he might speak directly yes. to our hearts, oh God. Answer our questions and minister to our needs and hear our hearts cry. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. And so from the beginning of the service to the end, from the youngest to the oldest, from the porch to the altar, have your way. For you're the potter and we're the clay. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. And as we remain standing, our scripture reading is coming from the New Testament and the Gospel of St. Luke. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, verses 11 through verse number 19. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 11 through verse number 19. And it came to pass, as he, Jesus, went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered, as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Verse 17, And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger? And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made be whole. May the Lord God add rich blessing to the reading and the hearing of his most holy word. And as we continue to stand, we're singing hymn number 249. Yes, God is real. Amen. How many know that God is real? Hallelujah. Amen. And if you don't know why right now, go find out. Hallelujah. Either you'll find out now or you'll find out later. God is real. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, God.
real. And you can feel it way down in your soul. Yes. Good morning again to everyone. This is another day the Lord has made. We are rejoicing. Yes. And we're being glad in this glorious day. We'd like to share our notices and our announcements this morning. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, we'd like to uh, announce sadly the passing this week of two of our precious loved ones. Amen. On uh, July the 7th, Mother Yvonne Armstrong. Amen. The uh, mother of Sister Dr. Nadine and Sister Rosemary in the Owls and Floyd. And, uh, Alice and Floyd Armstrong family went home to be with the Lord. And then uh, late last evening, uh, Reverend Professor Rito's mother, who was 96 year old, six years old, went home to be with the Lord, calling on the name of Jesus as she was leaving this body, going into glory. Hallelujah. So we give God the glory and the praise, and we'd like to solicit your prayers. Amen. For both families. Amen. This coming Sunday, uh, that would be July the 19th. At 3 o'clock, the homegoing service for Mother Yvonne Armstrong and also the memorial celebration for her husband, Frank Armstrong, who went home to be with the Lord three months prior. Amen. Will be celebrated Sunday, July the 19th at 3 p.m. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, uh, Sister Devine, Dr. Devine, is asking uh, to let all of the people know uh, that they need to tell her if you're coming. Uh, to their parents' homegoing service on Sunday, uh, July the 19th at 3 p.m. Uh, you can contact Dr. Davine Floyd at 908-468-3387. 908-468-3387. Amen. Uh, also, uh, we are celebrating birthdays this week. Uh, today, Sister Shantina Fleming. Saturday, July the 18th, uh, Brother Eugene Brown. Anniversaries this week, Thursday, July 16th, Pastor Mike and Reverend Marette Tyree. Take it. And may they all have a blessed day. Amen. There's a thank you uh, to Pastor Moore and First Lady Miss Margaret Scholarship Committee, Sunday School Teachers, and to all of our Second Baptist Church family. Thank you. May God bless you all. All our Second Baptist Church family has played a role in uh, Gia's finishing uh, high school. It takes a village to raise a child, to nurture a child, to plant God's seeds in a child's life. And we have done it with Gia and all the children at Second Baptist Church. Special thanks to Reverend Turner, who was at Abraham Clark High School side by side, behind the scene, and sometimes in the front line, making sure that Gia succeeded. It was a very challenging four years that only God knows. You made sure that Gia's academic achievements were on track and guided us every step of the way to make sure she found the right assistance. Job well, job well done, uh, Reverend Turner. We could not have done it without you. Your words made a lifetime positive impact on Gia. May God protect you, bless you, and keep you safe. We love and respect you. To Sister Martha Sanders, for your words of encouragement, your guidance and dedication to our children, you guided us in the scholarship process. Thank you for your dedication and love. And to Minister Joanne, your encouragement and words of wisdom made an impact on Gia's life. Thank you all. We love you all. To God be the glory. Gia Daddy. Henderson's family and from Gia. Amen. Amen. There's also uh, dinners for sale. Uh, Shantina Furman's will be launching her business, uh, Open Palette, uh, this Saturday beginning at 11 a.m. Many items include uh, fried white, uh, baked chicken, sides, beverages, and desserts. You can call or text 973 804 9555 to place your order today. So, Sister Shantina Clemens is launching her new business, Amen, Open Pound. You can call 973-804-9555 to place your order today. That will be on uh, July the 18th from 11 a.m. until, I guess until the supplies run out, to God be the glory. And she can cook, Amen, to God be the glory, hallelujah. Also, uh, uh, 
there are uh, daily breads that are available. Give us this day our daily bread. The new quarterly daily bread devotional pamphlets are available uh, for pickup on Sundays between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. in the parking lot. And remember to fill out your 2020 census. It's important the deadline has been extended to October 31st. Also, uh, there's short-term rental assistance program. It's available to help residents affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. And so you can contact 609-292-6055. That's the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs at 609-292-6055. Also, Psalm 23 Project Outreach Ministry, the event will continue to put together care packages for those in need. If you know of someone in need, please reach out to Sister Shantina Flemings at 973-752-1401. Again, 973-752-1401. And uh, take what you need, donate what you can. Sister Holly Schneider, again, a, a longtime friend of Second Baptist Church, has collaborate, collaborated with friend, a few friends and is inviting everyone to come on over to her pop-up community table seven days a week on Stuyvesant Avenue in Union, New Jersey. This is for anyone in need, no questions will be asked. Again, there is still free coronavirus testing at the King University. You can contact Councilwoman Cindy Thomas for further details at 908-377-8073. 908-377-8073. Praise the Lord. And then, uh, there are several ways that you can remain or can continue to give uh, to Second Baptist Church. There are three options. One is mail in your offering directly to the church at Second Baptist Church, P.O. Box 304, Rosedale, New Jersey, 07203. Second Baptist Church, P.O. Box 304, Rosedale, New Jersey, 07203. Or you can uh, give it directly to your designated diaconate member and they will be so glad to bring your offering to the church on Sunday morning. Then option two, you can drop off your offering at the church on Sunday mornings. While we're in this pandemic situation, every Sunday morning uh, at 9 o'clock to 9 o'clock to 10 a.m., amen, right here at the back door of the church parking lot. Or the third option is you can give electronically through our text to get feature from the APLOS website, APLOS website. You simply text GIVE, the amount that you'd like to give, to the telephone number 833-561-0179. Again, 833-561-0179, and then follow the prompt, amen, as you give to the church. And then there are three ways to stay connected, by Facebook, Instagram, and also by uh, also by telephone conference call. So that's Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and telephone conference call. Facebook Live would be SBC Roselle NJ, as well as Instagram, but you can also contact, contact us by our conference telephone call line, 978-990-5000. Access codes 374-329. And then also, if you miss those services, that are live, you can also reach us on the playback by calling 978-990-5099, same access code 374-329-PAN. Thursday night, young adult Bible studies can uh, continue with Pastor Mike via Zoom, so you can contact Pastor Mike on Zoom, young adult ministry. That's ages 18 to age number, uh, to age 35. Yes. Amen. To God be the glory. So I can still make it. I'm still 19. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. In spirit. Hallelujah. Please note, the church family, as we slowly phase back into church services in person, please stay connected uh, for updates through your diaconate ministry leaders. Measures are being put in place to ensure confidential health screening, social distancing, and hygienic practices. So please contact Nick and Joseph Williams at 908-245-4717 or Reverend Gurley Jones, 973-704-1040, should you need anything. Now I understand that the, uh, the governor uh, has uh, given us still uh, this guideline as far as uh, those that are allowed to uh, enter uh, or to have gatherings, amen, in the closed quarters, amen, we're, we're, we're with the understanding that we can accommodate up to 100. 
and, and it hasn't changed unless the governor causes a pause or a reduction in that number. Uh, but we can still now have 100 individuals coming to set Amen. So we can have fellowship, amen, and, and our service upstairs and downstairs. That's upstairs in the sanctuary and downstairs in the fellowship hall, and we can watch it over the monitor, praise God. But you can still be in the church building. Now, this mindful that if you have a high temperature, if you're at 100 degrees, then please consider staying home because we want to make sure that you're safe and we want to make sure that everyone else is safe. But also, as you do approach the church, you will uh, have your temperature read. Amen. You'll also uh, find that we have sanitizing stations. But we're asking that you'll come and wear your mask and your gloves. Praise the Lord. And uh, we're, pra we're practicing social distancing in our sanctuary. So to God be the glory, there are designating uh, seating positions so that we are in safe, uh, in safe proximity of uh, what is considered social distancing. We thank God in for our audience, uh, Brother uh, Jackson Jeffries. Thank God for our videographer, Amen, Sister Brittany Davis Campbell. Thank God for our sound technician, Brother uh, Kendrick Abraham. We thank God for Jesus, who's in the midst of us tonight. We thank God for And the most important announcement of all is this Jesus Christ is soon to come. And it pays to be ready. Because ready or not, Jesus is coming. Amen. And as Smokey the Christian Bear would say, <laughs> only you can prevent eternal fires. Amen. The God of the the choice is up to you. Praise the Lord. Well, it's preaching time. <laughs> and Pastor Mike is uh, going to be bringing forth the word of God momentarily. He is our youth pastor. Amen. And uh, we're going to uh, sing the song 350, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And after we sing this song, the very next voice you'll hear is that of Pastor Michael Tyree. But let's point our hands in his direction in the meantime and invoke God's blessing and say, God bless Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike. And God you, Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike. And Lord God, speak to my heart through your mansion. Pastor Michael Tyree, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Join with me as we stand and we're singing hymn number 340. What a friend we have in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah.
my brothers and my sisters, Pastor Michael Tyree, hear ye him in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us bow. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for all that you brought us through during this time, oh God, we thank you for keeping us. We thank you for even the lives of those who went home to be with you, oh Lord. We thank you for the example. And we ask that you remind us to be thankful, even in the midst of these times, to be thankful for our lives and all you've done in the lives of those who are gone and who are still here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I ask you, oh God, to move my, me from here behind this pulpit and put yourself front and center, oh God. Help your people to see you. Help me to add what you have me to add and omit what you have me to omit. Help me to stay backstage, pulling the curtain for you. And I thank you for the opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, there's different ways um, that you can say thank you. Wow, it's nice to see all of y'all. It's different, there's different ways you can say thank you. Um, some ways are more thankful than others. You ever heard somebody say, yeah, well, thanks a lot. That's not real thanks. So if someone says, uh -huh, uh -huh, thank you, thank you. Or if someone looks at you in your eyes and uh, maybe uh, before the pandemic shakes your hand, says, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for who you are. Or if someone flippantly turns around and says, thank you, and just leaves. There's different ways to say thank you. Children sometimes are really earnest to say, thanks, Dad. Thank you so much. Or sometimes I'll plate their food and I'll say, thank you, and they really mean it. Other times I'll do something and I'll say, thanks, Dad, real quick. And I know that's not really all the way coming from the heart. It's just out of response. But after thanking Jesus Christ for who he is in my life and all he's done. I want to thank my wife, Reverend Marie, for this week coming to 10 years of marriage. Amen. 10 years Amen. of putting up with me. She's a saint. <laughs> 10 years, five labors, no epidurals, five healthy children, 10 years, three different places we lived, 10 years of love. And she taught me something that she, she learned from someone else, um, that we often say, love you, love you, babe, love you. But someone taught her, and I don't remember who it was, and then she taught me that we should say, I love you to own the love and to know it's coming, where it's really coming from. And when you say, I love you, it comes, it, it, it's deeper. They love you, I love you. So Reverend Moret, I thank you, and most of all, Jesus, I thank you for your love, for your patience with me, for putting up with me for 43 years. That don't even sound right to say, 43 years, but thank you, Jesus. I want to speak to you today, and I believe the Holy Spirit has led me to speak to you today um, here on the phone call on Instagram and on Facebook from the topic of thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. If we go to the scripture and we read the scripture together quickly again, it says in Luke 17, verses 11 through 19, I'll read it for you here in Luke 17, 11 through 19, verse 11 says, and it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And he lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of the ten, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back with a loud voice, glorifying God. 
and fell down his face at his, at his feet, at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, um, We're not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, unto the stranger that came back, he said, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Thanks a lot. There's a song that children sing, and I think I learned it from Reverend Margaret, and then also from Reverend James Moore Jr. and my wife, Reverend Moret, that the children sing at vacation Bible schools here and at Union Baptist in Kenilworth. Um, and it, it goes like this. They start with their hand like this, and they say, and they get animated. And they, I've got so much, 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 so much to be thankful for. And they start over. I've got so much, 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 so much to be thankful for. And Reverend Margaret, I believe, one day when she was. Watching the children for us, as they have done so many times, um, they began a, 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 a devotion, and we try to continue that. And we haven't been as consistent as we should, but that's one of the songs they sing. And they'll say, they say, I got so much, so much, and and I have them all take turns giving something that they're thankful for. And Michaela will come, and she'll say, and and, and she she'll she'll list the things in kind of a a, a mode of prayer on us. Well, I thank God for this and that and that, and then my likes to go last. So we don't go in age order, and then we'll get to Mariah, and she'll say, she'll, 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 with a smile, say all the things that she's thankful for, and then we'll go to McKenna, and McKenna, well, we don't know what she's saying, um, <laughs> but she's being thankful, and she's thank God. Okay, man, all right, amen, thank you. And then we'll get to Maya, and she'll make up a song. I'm thankful for the house, the people, the, the whatever, the food, the friends, da, 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 my mom, my dad, my sisters, that's what I'm thankful for. And they all have something to be thankful for. We'll go to, even to the baby, to little Mia, and of course she won't say anything. We'll say, Mia, what are you thankful for? Amen, I've got so much, so much. But, you know, it's, it's a good practice to be reminded of what we're thankful for. And I think what's happened to me and what's happened to many of us during this time, um, it's hard to think about what you're thankful for. Family members are going home, whether it be from COVID or otherwise, and people are leaving this earth, and then people are sick. And I have a cousin who, who had uh, pre-existing issues, and he had to be in, induced, he had to, get a, he had to be induced to a coma, and they, and they induced a coma, and then he came out of the coma, and he was in rehab, and and uh, in rehab, he, he fell again, he had a fever, not COVID, I don't think, but he had a fever and he had seizures. And so all this is going on while his wife, um, who's only a few years older than me, I'd say she's probably about 48 around, which is, her, his wife is my cousin, but I call him my cousin too, because they're married. And the child are at, is at home, praying that everything will turn out all right. Yet, she's always thanking God. An example to me, she's always thanking God. I thought I was the example. Here I am where we have a, we had a situation in the house this past week or the week before, I believe, where there was a, I heard a chirping in the basement. So I would go down and something would back. So I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, and I, could, I, I, and I, and I, and I started, you know, kicking around some stuff, and when I kicked it, I said, oh, Lord, I said, well, now, now, now what happens is, don't go to the internet when you have an issue, and I did this with my children when they're sick, don't, don't go to the internet, I go to the internet, now I'm looking up baby raccoon sounds, baby possum sounds, groundhog sounds, it was, so, my buddy came by, hey, hey, Bruce, you know, but he came by and we looked, and, um, we found it was a baby bird. And um, I don't know how a baby bird got in the house. I don't know if maybe we had something outside of it, and it for a long time and it came in. Or I, I, I do not know. But for two or three days, I was upset. And I wasn't thankful. I was focusing on the bird in the basement and not the whole house I have. I was focusing on the bird in the basement and not the family in the home. I was focusing on the bird in the basement 
and not the food I have and the clothes I have. I was focusing on the burden of basement and not the fact that my entire family's healthy. I was focusing on the burden in the basement and not everything else. I have a friend, and it's not Eddie, but I have another friend who dealt with a situation this past week where he had mice in his apartment. And um, he don't like mice. And he said he thought his mind was playing tricks on him, as they say, and he saw something, you know, a shadow go by, and he looked and said, oh, oh. So him and his children got on the couch with their feet up um, because he don't, he don't play with mice like that. And then another day went by, and the trap the one the trap caught some mice and caught five baby mice. Oh, no. And he's clean. They're clean people. Five baby mice. And then the mother came out and ran behind the stove. And they caught the mother, I believe, this morning. But he was focusing on the mouse and not on the house or the apartment. That's what happens when something comes into our lives. We often focus on the bad or, or the situation. Oh, God, why me? Why, why this bird? Why five mice? Why mouse? All these situations. And we're not focusing on the plethora of things that totally outweigh the things that we go through. Even the big things we go through, sickness and passings of family members and situations with money or living quarters, all these things. But we focus on the problem and not on the one who always has a solution. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, Luke 17, 11. So that means he was traveling north. Galilee is north of Samaria. So he's traveling north. And in verse 12, 12, it says, as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men. Someone say 10 men. 10 men that were lepers, say lepers, lepers, which stood afar off. And as the Bible has taught us and as pastor has taught us, when you're a leper during that time, you were to stand approximately 12 cubits away from anyone. 12 cubits, approximately 16 feet. Right now we're in a situation where we have to stay 6 feet away from each other. You add another 10 feet to that, that's how far they had to stand. And not only did they have to stand that far, they had to cry, I am unclean, when in the midst of people, so that people would move out of the way and make sure that they stayed 16 feet or so away from them. And they lifted up their voices, these 10 lepers, these 10 men with, the le with, with leprosy. And they lifted up their voices and said in verse 13, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They lifted up their voices. They didn't count a robbery to beg, to plead with Jesus to speak to their situation. Have mercy on us. They didn't count a robbery to call him Jesus Master. They gave him reverence before they even asked for mercy. They acknowledged who he was before requesting something. They didn't just get on their knees and say, God, I need, I need, I want, I want, I want. They spent time saying, Jesus, Master. And verse 14, and he said, and when he saw them, Jesus, when he saw them, he said unto them, already knowing what they wanted, go show yourselves unto the priests. What would your reaction be? Just think in your head. If there's a man, a holy man, named, we won't even say his name, but there's a holy man in the midst of our, of our area. And you're very, very sick. And you go and you say, have mercy on me. Heal me. I know you have power from on high. Heal me. And the response is, go show yourselves to the priests. Now, being honest, as a human, you're going to have some reservations about that response. See, Jesus knew what he was doing, and Jesus knew what was going to take place even before they came to him. But these people, were ten, these ten lepers, were human beings. And they were asking someone to help them, and the person they asked, being Jesus, told them to go show themselves to someone else. And it came to pass, as they went, they were cleansed. Now, how many out of the ten, just think in your mind, do you think when they were told to go show themselves to the priest, how many 
the beginning, in the beginning of the journey, before they were cleansed, how many of you think you think were complaining? Someone said ten. Someone else might say nine because the one was grateful. Who knows? But if you sometimes Jesus, he know all the time he knows our situation, but sometimes he will tell you ask him for something, and he may not give it to you immediately, but he'll tell you where to go. Because there's somewhere he wants you to go. And on that way there, or when you get there, the healing or whatever you're asking for is there. But we're too busy complaining. Maybe there was a reason the bird was in the basement. Maybe there's a reason the mice were in my friend's house. Who knows? But we're so busy complaining that we missed the journey and what God said to do. He told you to go. He told them to go show themselves unto the priest. And I'm sure, just using my sanctified imagination, I'm sure that some of them were like, well, you know, he didn't do anything. He told us to leave. He told us to go to the priest. Some of them were probably thinking, he told us, ah, let the priest heal you. No, he didn't say that. He said, go show yourselves to the priest. He didn't say that the priests were going to heal you. But we start to formulate all these things in our minds as Christians saying, Go here, but we're going here, uh, and we're going there, and nothing's going our way. And it came to pass, as they went, they were cleansed. 15, and one of them, when he saw that he was healed, cleansed, turned back, and with a loud voice, glorified God. And one of, so, so we, we go back to verse uh, 13, it says, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And, and in verse 15 it says, and one of them, when he saw he was healed, cleansed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Yes. Not only a lifted up voice, as they all did in verse 13, but a loud voice. What? Guess what? That tells me praise is sometimes loud. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. going to hurt somebody watching or here, I'm sure. That means praise isn't always quiet. Yes. The problem that we have in the problem that we have in the black church in many, in many cases, and it's, it's been changing now for years, but I've seen it as more as a child. But I still see it sometimes now is some people just don't open their mouth when it's time to praise. I don't care who it is. They could have been there 30, 50 years. They can be on whatever ministry or what board there is to offer. And they will not open their mouth. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And one of them, verse 15, when he saw he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice Glorify God. I'm not saying praise is always loud. And I'm not saying if you're mute or you can't speak that you're not able to praise. What I'm saying is that if you have the ability to praise and you don't, shame on you. If you have the ability to praise and you've never been loud, with your praise, shame on you. If you have the ability to praise and you have the ability to speak and you have the ability to be loud, but you're never loud, never have been loud when you're praising, your excuse is, well, I'm a quiet spirit. Or I'm a quiet person. Take that excuse and throw it in the garbage with the rest of the junk. And shame on you. Turn that shame around into praise to God on high. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I've got so much. Thank you, Lord. Don't just say when God gives you uh, blessing after blessing after blessing. You know that song that says, For every mountain you brought down. For every trial you've seen me through, for every blessing, hallelujah, for this I give you praise. Right? You know that song, right? You heard that song before? I think we sang it here. I think my mom 
else I gotta think. So it, it, you have to give him praise, but it, it doesn't mean uh, you, you asked God for something, or maybe you didn't even ask him, he just gave it to you and said, okay, thanks a lot, and move on about your business. That's disrespectful. We teach our children, not just me and my wife, we as a community teach our children to say thank you, uh, to say please, uh, to be polite. And yet, when God does something for us, some of us don't thank him. We wake up morning after morning, and, and sometimes we'll say, thank you, thank you, God, for waking me up. I'm guilty of that. I don't, I don't wake up and say thank you immediately. He's the first thing on my mind, and I'm still not saying thank you, God, for waking me up. You didn't have to wake me up this morning. Thank you, all my children are saying. Yeah. There's nothing you can do about yourself when you lay down, or when you lay your children down. Nothing you can do. Nothing. All you can do is wait for God to wake you up. Yeah. 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 The alarm clock is not waking you up. God is waking you up. The alarm clock is there as a tool. God wields the tool. God created the tool. So this one man, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face on, on his face at Jesus' feet. Fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And watch this. And he was a Samaritan. So the Samaritans were, they did not supposed to have anything to do with the Jews. He fell down on his face, the one who came back, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Mm -hmm. we, maybe that means the other nine more. Even though they were in Samaria, maybe they were just wandering and, you know, the lepers and they're trying to find someone who can heal them when they heard Jesus might come that way, so they're there. So, out of these ten, the Samaritan, maybe the only Samaritan, was the one who fell on his face and worshipped Jesus at his feet. But here's something I want you to catch there, what was through. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet. Remember when he was a leper? Couldn't be anywhere near anyone. Mm -hmm. Had to be 16 feet, 12 cubits, or they're about away from people and cry out who you are and that you're unclean and you're leprous so that people wouldn't uh, be near you or, or catch your disease. But here, the restriction of distance is removed and he's able to lay down at the feet of Jesus. And he fell down his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. Sometimes when you're someone that doesn't have anything, you're more grateful when you get something. Oh yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you, God. Then this is a confession. What I've noticed is I I I uh I grew up nice. Right? I grew up at Roselle. I went to private school till sixth grade in Clark. Uh, I went to St. Joseph's, the carpenter school here in Roselle, 7th and 8th grade. I went to Roselle Catholic, 9th to 12th grade. Uh, I, and and, and my, my parents always poured money into us. Those things. But what, and what I've noticed is, in, in my life, earlier, and even a little bit now, is that my family members and cousins, who didn't have what I had, are more, they strive more and are more grateful for what they have now, mm -hmm. right, right, and that's that's not that's not a knock to my to 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 even to me or to my parents at all. I'm not I'm not trying to knock the situation. I'm thankful for the way I came up, but they're more thankful when they get out of where they were, out of the projects. Right, my cousin who played in the NFL was in the he lived in the projects. Mm -hmm. We used to go over there and have, you know, they fry up some chicken and all that kind of stuff, and there'd be 20, 30 of us in this, the little project apartment, and now he made. 28, I think, million dollars just in NFL. And that's, that's not including, you know, all the other things he did. The only reason I share that is because you can find out why. And that's how I found it. I don't ask about his money. <laughs> 28 million dollars just in the NFL playing 10 years. Um, I believe it was seven or eight for the Steelers and two or three for the Jets. But I see people who have come out of things and they have a greater gratitude. Yes, this Samaritan man who was a leper, 
Not only was he a lep, he, he was a leper, but he was a Samaritan. Mm -hmm. So he's already like, get away from me. Yeah. I don't want nothing to do with you. Then on top of that, he became leprous. Mm -hmm. So now even his own people don't want nothing to do with him. Right. Stay away. 16 feet. 6 feet. Stay away. Don't bother me. Don't touch me. He was so thankful afterwards that he had to run back to Jesus and praise him and thank him, thank him and lay at his feet. Verse 17, and Jesus answering said, oh, Jesus probably didn't say oh, but I'm just paraphrasing. Were there not ten cleansed? Like, you're coming back. But this is, this is not multiple. This is division. What is, this is subtraction. What's going on? Where are the nine? So I'm sure that when we, we look at that, we're reminded, and, and Jesus starts saying, look, I leave the 99 to find no one. Amen. But I heal 10, yes, sir. and only one comes back. One. This is the thanks I get. Thanks a lot. I heal 10, one returns. Where's the other nine? 18 says, there are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. Sometimes strangers are nicer than family and friends. Sometimes the streets treat you more like family than the church of Christ, mm -hmm. church of God, Help than us. Christians. Jesus. Sometimes the world is there for you more yes. than your close-knit circle. Mm -hmm. They are not found that return to the glory of God, save the stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. Yes, God is real, real in my soul. For he has washed, he cleansed them, back in verse 13, 14, in verse 14, he cleansed them. For he has washed and made me whole. Many theologians look at that as the other nine were washed, they were cleansed, but this one was made whole. So there's a process, right, to receiving something from God. First, you acknowledge who he is, who Christ is, son of Jesus, I mean son of God, died on the cross, that you're a sinner, have mercy on me. Then you, re you, you receive what you're going to receive after you follow his instructions. Mm -hmm. So for me, I had, I had, and still some of us have issues with high blood pressure, right? So the, the God, God said, well, okay, you know, go to the doctor. Okay, so I go to the doctor. Then you got some pills. Okay, get the pills. You don't have to stay on those forever. The doctors used to say, oh, that's it. Once you get blood pressure, diabetes, all those things, you're, that's it. You're on medication the rest of your life. Now, doctors start to change and say, you, especially for me, they say, you're young. You know, you can, you can reverse this. So go and do that. And then you have to exercise and eat right and all those things. Then after you follow the instructions, then you receive the healing. The healing is not coming from the doctors or the pills. The healing is coming from God. People say, oh, well, the pills did that. Well, okay. Well, who made the pills? Well, the, the pharmaceutical company did it. Okay. Well, who made the stuff that makes the pills? Oh. And they try to create humans and clone humans. No, no, no. That pastor said, pastor said no, no, no. You create your own. Get, get your own dirt. And make a human. And then after you follow the instructions, you receive what God has for you. And then after the, you're healed, you're cleansed, or whatever the situation is, you received it. And then you have to thank God. Yes, Lord. For real, for real, thank you. Yes. Like really, really praise him loud. Hallelujah. Yes. And then after you do that, then you get made whole. Yes. But if you skip one of those steps, you don't get to the ending. 
Thanks a lot. I just want to close with this. As you look at all these verses and you look at the beginning of each verse and verse 11, verse 12, and verse 13, and verse 14, and then the second part of 14, and, and verse 15, and verse 16, and verse 17, and verse 18 is there, and in verse 19, and and, 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 How many ands has Jesus, has God done in your life? You were born, and. You were nourished, and. You were kept safe, and. You lived, and. You prospered, and. You lived another day. And. He healed you. And. He took care of our situation. And. He turned you away from sin. And. He asked you to follow him. And. He gave you the Holy Spirit. And. He lived again. And. 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 And it's still part of church quiet. We go home now in the pandemic and some of us don't pay attention to Bible study or church service or anything. Don't read our Bibles. And God is upset. And God is still punishing. And God has mercy. I just want to encourage everyone to make sure you're thanking and praising God with a loud voice. Because I'm not going to let some stranger outdo me. Thanks a lot. And as we uh, continue, we'd just like to offer this invitation for those of you that don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord, God, and Savior, to surrender your life to Him. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot enter, see, or come into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. You must be born again, he said to Nicodemus. But Nicodemus had this question, Lord, how can a man be born the second time from his mother's womb? Jesus said, except you be born of the water and the spirit, you can in no wise inherit and enter the kingdom of God. How do we do that? The Bible says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ, that he's been raised from the power of the dead. Thou shalt be saved. And so with the mouth, confession made unto salvation with the heart. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I invite you to pray along with me to invite Jesus to come into your heart and to your life and repeat these words and say, Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my heart, Lord, and save me. Make me a new creature and help me to live for you and serve you the balance of the days of my life. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the very Son of God and that you are my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
And if you prayed that prayer, then Jesus Christ has entered your heart. Jesus Christ has now become your Savior, your Lord, and your God. It's not based on feeling. It's not based on experience. It's by faith that you are saved. And because Jesus Christ has done all that was necessary to give you the access to the kingdom of God in heaven as a child of God, he's done what was necessary to lay down his life. He who knew no sin became sin for you and I that we might become the righteousness of God. And now you've done your part and that you've confessed him and received him as your personal Lord, God, and Savior. Now you and the Lord Jesus Christ together, as the Lord works out your soul's salvation, you and the Lord Jesus Christ together, and then we'll be co-laborers and partners in this work called gospel ministry. As you let your light so shine before men, women, boys, and girls that they see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. God has served notice on us that he wants us to give him thanks out of a grateful heart. So writer said, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy Lord. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his son. And now let the weak say that I'm strong. Let the poor say that I'm rich. Out of all the Lord has done for us, give thanks. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so now, amen, as we're preparing to close, we're inviting you to our Bible studies on Tuesday morning at 1030 and Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. on our telephone conference line, 978-990-5000, access code 374-329-POUND. On Tuesday morning at 1030 on the 14th, our teacher will be in the person of Reverend Ed Mack. On Tuesday evening at 7 p.m., our teacher will be in the person of walking deaconess Ruth Abraham. I'm excited, amen, to get on the line to hear this teaching. Amen, as I'm coming on the line hungry and thirsty for righteousness, and I'm knowing I will be fed. We have two masterful teachers, and we give God the glory and the praise. But we invite you to Second Baptist Church, 200 Locust Street, Roselle, New Jersey, 07203. That's will come and worship with us. We're not a perfect church by any means, but by all means, we serve a perfect Savior, and his name is Jesus. May God richly bless you and heaven smile upon you is our prayer as Pastor Mike now comes to give his final closing remarks and or prayer of benediction in Jesus' name. God bless you. So the best if you pray, thank you, Lord. Again, let's sing that together.
able to present us faultless before his throne of grace. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let all God's people sing. Amen.